Well, I had been in Niafu for about three months. Niafu is a beautiful harbor, very quiet, and it's where most of the people in Tonga live. The markets, the bars, the restaurants are, are all there, so it was nice to be there. But the thing is, Tonga is a beautiful cruising ground. It has all kinds of different islands and, and things. So here's a chart just showing briefly the uh, top part in green are the more mountainous areas. And on the bottom, where you see the light blue, those are sand shoals primarily. So it gets more and more sandy as you go down south. So I left Niafu, and I was heading for a different anchorage to the south. And this is called Tapana. And this little barge here is owned by a couple called uh, named uh, Larry and Sherry. And they had, they called this the Art Museum because Sherry was an artist. Larry owned a, a catamaran sailboat. Here they are. Uh, Larry is an accomplished sailor and Sherry is a very good artist. So they organize a lot of things, including these weekly get-togethers, uh, potlucks on the beach. So the people who were anchored there, and Larry also maintained the anchorages, the, uh, the moorings, uh, we would get together and we would bring food. And here you see my friend Charles and Brian, and with a hat, that's Dave. And uh, there'd be a fire, and uh, you just kind of get together for a couple of hours or whatever, have a few drinks, and uh, just have whatever there was to eat and uh, it was a really nice way to uh, just get everyone together and at night there'd be a, a fire sometimes uh, somebody would have a guitar that's Jerry there uh, this is Brian Larry and I be believe it's Gert now one day <clears throat> I'd met this lady uh, in Niafu this young lady was a marine biology student studying whales on that island that you see in the background and she wanted to see some of the rest of Tonga so I picked her up brought her back and the first day we did a hike up to the top of the uh, hill above the anchorage there's a, uh, a connecting uh, bridge of sand that's visible at low tide going to the next island to the south so the next day we got some of the cruisers together and we did a hike at low tide and here's Megan with uh, Wendy, and here's Megan with her husband, La uh, was Larry. Yes, Larry and Dave. Excuse me. <laughs> so uh, they were. Um, we were walking around and uh, just looking at the marine life. It was really nice because you know it was exposed, so you could see a lot of intertidal things. These are some. Uh, these piles of sand are worm. Burrows. Now, a lot of the local people would go out and kind of look for things to eat. And so they would go every day at low tide. There were a lot of things you would see, and then they'd be covered up by the, by the ocean in a few hours. So it was, it was quite interesting. Now, at one end of the, the sand bridge, there were these structures that had been carved into the bedrock, into the limestone. And I was told that they were made by the Tongans a long time ago and they were used for crypts because the Tongans buried uh, their dead and they covered them with these slabs. Uh, I, I showed one of those in a previous video, but uh, you can tell there's a lot of workmanship that went into these. Now, one thing that was really interesting was the annual uh, agricultural show and in this event uh, people would get together from all the different provinces in Tonga and they would they would display their uh, vegetables and uh, fish and sea life and also some of their livestock and it was a really really nice thing they had some spectacular exhibits now uh, the first thing is uh, seaweed because they collect seaweed and they dry it out uh, another really important thing are the uh, the shellfish. These baskets are made from coconut fronds and all the various uh, organisms are kept in there. They're labeled. They're also labeled with the place they came from. So you can see here there's a combination of, of clams and snails and there's a giant clam down there. Now these things are, they look kind of like kites, but they're actually octopus. And so they have eight arms, they, they dry them out, and uh, they spread, they have a membrane between their arms. And of course, uh, 
they're good to eat. You know, they're very high in protein. And so uh, they would, they had quite a few of these. Here's a, a young lady uh, looking at one of the arms of the octopus. Uh, there are also fish there. You can see a trigger fish right in the middle of that. There's some lobster. Here's some snails and uh, various others. There's a giant clam. Uh, these are fish. Uh, some of these names I recognize from other islands. Uh, there's some pearl oysters here because they also cultivate pearls in some places. So uh, they had pretty much a little bit of everything there. This, this thing right here is a coconut crab, which is a very interesting animal. It lives on coconuts and it climbs to, to the top of coconut trees. It, it snips the coconuts and then it goes back to the base of the uh, the tree and eats the fallen coconut. So there was really a wide variety of things to see. They also had crafts such as these traditional Tongan canoes. It was actually a European guy that designed and built this using a little more modern um, materials, but it's essentially a Tongan canoe. This elderly lady was selling uh, artwork, uh, woodcuts and engravings and things like that. I think that's her granddaughter that's with her there. The, the Tongan people really revere their elders. Now, one thing that's very important to Tongans and other people in, in the Pacific are yams. Now, on the right, you see the, the living yam plant, and the brown things are the root or the actual yam. Now, here they are. These are the ones for sale. It's a staple of Polynesian people's diet and it's uh, a very good source of carbohydrate so for you know for thousands of years they've been eating these kinds of things they also had livestock there this is obviously a bull and there was a uh, they had uh, sheep and lambs they didn't have any pigs on display but pigs are pretty much everywhere in Tonga so I guess I was just getting tired of seeing them all the time this lady here is showing off some vanilla. Now vanilla is a new thing in Tonga. It's native to South America and the bee that pollinates them is only found there so anywhere in the Pacific that it's grown it has to be hand pollinated. But it's a very good climate for growing so it's uh, important. So uh, about this time I went with my friend Charles to a luau. A luau is a, a feast essentially. It's uh, done throughout Polynesia. And for this particular one, it was on the other side of the island, and very nice place, it's low tide, and so they had guests coming over. It was like a weekly thing, and here Charles is talking to the owner of the place, who was also the uh, agricultural minister of Tonga, so he was very knowledgeable. And here's the, the roast pig, uh, very common throughout the Pacific. And here's Charles enjoying the, the luau. Another friend of mine, Jerry, who I've shown before, uh, a really accomplished musician, and his friend Hert, uh, they came to Tapana. Jerry was looking to buy property, so we walked around the island, and we went up to the only house on the island, which was owned by a Spanish guy named Miguel. Now this is also a restaurant and Miguel is a very good musician and so is Jerry. And so uh, I had actually been to his restaurant, really excellent food. And they had uh, Miguel and his family played uh, instruments and it was a very, very nice place. So Tapana was, was pretty special, it was quiet. You had to occasionally go into town and Larry and Sherry would take us to the market and we would buy fresh vegetables and just kind of maybe see a few people and then go back to Tapana. Now, one day Larry wanted to haul his boat out so he could paint the bottom. Normally you do this in a shipyard, but in this case we, we use block and tackles and log rollers, so big coconut logs that have been cut, and we rolled it up this embankment so that Larry could paint the bottom of the boat. And it was a pretty... Uh, pretty laborious process. It took about 10 of us to do it. So I wanted to see some other places, so I made some side trips. This one is to Kanutu, which is a, an island on the eastern side of Tonga. One side is very rough and the other is pretty sheltered. So I got there. I found this 
uh, it's like a tree house built out over the water. And went up there, looked down, there were some tropic birds, these birds with the long white tails. Uh, they nest in the, the rocks and crevices there. And then I went for a walk to the next island. Again, it was exposed at low tide. This was a, a boat that was bringing water there because there was a project going on. This guy I had met previously at Larry's place and uh, he had also been fishing on the way over to bring the water and so he he showed me his uh, his catch which was pretty nice you know uh, Tonga's got a lot of fish life. The next day was really clear so I went back to the tree house and took some more pictures and while I was there another boat arrived and it was Garrett and his brother, they're both South Africans, and uh, we did a little bit of a hike on this island. We went to the southern part of the island, and it was very nice. The, uh, the island has one side that's exposed, the eastern side is exposed to the wind, so you get a lot of uh, wave action there. The other side is much more sheltered, and so this is the other side. You can see the difference. You have a lot of coral growing over there, not much wind. And so it has a nice contrast. Here I'm out on a little ridge and I have the, on the left is the rough side and the other side is calm. Now this fish is called a coral trout. I hadn't done much spear fishing up to this point and I hadn't seen a coral trout so far. Coral trout are native to the Pacific and I actually did my PhD research on coral trout and I speared a lot of them in Australia where I did my PhD but this was the first time in 20 years that I'd speared one and you can see it's a, a pretty good size fish. The, the shot wasn't that great but I did get the fish and it's a, a really delicious fish. It's the number one uh, most popular food fish in Australia and I was just really excited to, to, uh, to eat one again. I got other fish, of course. Uh, there was a jack there on the right and a parrot fish. And I got this fish, which is a, a mangrove jack, actually a snapper, but it was down about 70 feet when I, I speared it. Of course, it's all free diving. That's about as deep as I have speared a fish before. And it was, uh, I was pretty excited because it was a, a good sized fish and would feed me for a while. So then I went to the southernmost part of this place in Tonga. And these islands are uninhabited. Nobody, there's no houses there. Um, all the beaches are sandy. Uh, there's not much water there, but they're really beautiful. They're very shallow, so you have to anchor the boats outside and then take a dinghy into shore. But the shoreline was beautiful, all sand, and there were a lot of birds there. Here you see my my boat uh, resting at anchor. So I said, as I said, there were a lot of birds nesting there. These are terns. They they predominantly stayed on the outside of the island. These these dark, uh, I think they're knotty terns. And in the interior, you have these other type, which are called fairy terns. Beautiful birds. They fly under the canopy of the forest and they they nest on branches basically they actually lay their eggs right onto the branches so in the interior it was beautiful it was kind of like a uh, a green room inside and I, I photographed this hermit crab uh, they're just basically uh, there's nobody out there to molest anything so it was is very nice so I stayed in Tonga another few months and I'll be making another video pretty soon to show that. But if you enjoyed this video, please remember to share and subscribe.